examine two questions. How does the gospel gospel and who am I gospeling? Let's begin with the question, who am I gospeling? What I'd like you to do, if you would, is to construct a table with five columns in it and at the head of each column to place the following words, neighbours, leisure, work, church, family. And now taking a few minutes, would you write in those columns names of non-Christian people from those different settings? As you fill out the columns, you may discover some quite interesting facts about your own life. Somebody was doing this recently here in the city, where of course everybody commutes from the suburbs, and admitted that in the neighbour and leisure column, there were only three names in total, two in one, one in the other. He said to me, I've got rather a sad life. But the work column had over 20 names in it. My response was, no, your life is not sad, but the Industrial Revolution has happened. This means, of course, that he no longer lives and works uh, amongst the same people, and the people with whom he spends most of his time are the people at work. Now, this will be different for everybody, but as you fill out this table, it will show you the mission field that God has given to you as an individual. And from that list of names, now, it's worth selecting a few for whom you are going to pray on a regular basis that God will give you an opportunity to share the news that Jesus Christ is Lord. Remember what we've discovered about them already from the previous videos. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Whether they like it or not, whether they believe it or not, whether they admit it or not, God has already enthroned Jesus as Lord over them and over all of his creation. Furthermore, God's wrath is currently being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness of men who in their godlessness suppress the knowledge of God and are without excuse. And so God is angry with those individuals and without the saving work of Jesus Christ, they will face ultimately his judgment at the end of time. These two gospel truths, announcement truths concerning the news from God of the Lord Jesus Christ should energise us and drive us as we ponder them and pray about them to want to share the gospel with our own personal mission field. I sometimes say, say to somebody here in the city, why do you think God has put you in your office? He's put you there as a witness with the news that Jesus Christ is Lord for those amongst whom you work. We'll come back to the personal mission field in just a few minutes' time. Before we do that, let's ask the question, how then does the gospel gospel? Gospel simply means news. In other words, it has to be announced. And that point about the announcement is there implicit in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation. In other words, the power to save somebody is actually in the announcement itself in the gospel is the power for somebody to be saved. Think of your own conversion to Christianity. How did you actually become a Christian? In 98% of cases, or more probably, of those listening to this video, you will be able to think back to somebody, some event, maybe a book, or a video like this, or a friend or family members or a church where you actually heard the announcement. And so the gospel does the work of gospeling through the gospel being gospeled, being announced. But who does what as the gospel is announced? In John chapter 3, when Jesus speaks famously to Nicodemus, he tells Nicodemus that no one can enter the kingdom unless they're born again. He then explains that being born again comes by water and the Spirit. 
Water is the washing that comes through the death of Jesus on the cross. And the Spirit is God entering into a now cleansed person as they put their trust in Jesus. The Spirit enters in and brings life from God. In verse 6 of chapter 3, Jesus says, flesh gives birth to flesh. So how is it that God brings spiritual life into a person's heart? Well, he expands on it in chapter 6. The flesh counts for nothing, John 6, 63. The fresh flesh is of no avail. The Spirit gives life. Now notice how the verse continues. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. In other words, it's the gospel itself, the word of the announcement, which is God's way by his spirit to bring life into a person's soul as it is spoken. And when you think back to your own conversion, that is precisely what happened as you were converted. You heard the news that Jesus Christ is Lord. You were convinced of your own sin. You heard the news that Jesus died on the cross to carry God's judgment in your place. And as you heard and learned and grew and heard and learned, so God the Holy Spirit, through his life-giving word, was bringing your soul to new birth. Flesh gives birth to flesh. The Spirit gives birth to spirit. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. We see this point captured beautifully in Peter's first letter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, where he says, You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding. Now, how would you expect that sentence to finish? If you'd read John 3, you would expect it to finish through the living and abiding Spirit of God. But it doesn't finish like that, through the living and abiding Word of God. So you see, the power of God for salvation is in the gospel word. It's as God speaks his word of the gospel, his announcement, into a person's heart, that he creates life in his children's heart and brings them to new birth. Remember how you became a Christian. Now let's go back to that list of contacts. Get out the list again and have a look at the names who you are, are going to be praying for. I have my own list like it. How is it that any one of them is going to come out from under the wrath of God into a living experience of Jesus Christ and a life now lived to his glory? Well, only through hearing the gospel word. It's as they hear the gospel word that God will create life within them by the power of his Holy Spirit. I need, therefore, to be praying for opportunities, natural opportunities, in the course of everyday conversation, to share the gospel with them. Indeed, I want to be praying for opportunities to read the gospel with them or to take them to an event where the gospel is explained. In the next training video, we'll begin to look at some of the ways in which we can do this.